Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, your boy Virtus here and welcome back to the Unreal Engine 4 RPG series. In today's video we are going to be showing you how you can get our AI moving, getting it to chase the player when you walk in front of them and also how we can get the navigation set up for the AI so they can actually move within our level, set the boundaries for the AI and all of that good stuff. So. Let's go ahead and dive straight into it. So the first thing that I want to do then is I need to create something called a nav mesh bounds volume. This pretty much calculates and tells the AI exactly where they can go within our level. Right now you can see we've got nowhere they can go essentially. I mean to you, to the player's eyes, it looks like they can go everywhere, but to the engine they can't really see anything and that's why you need to set this nav mesh bounds volume. So let me show you exactly what I'm talking about. So if I go over to my modes panel on the left hand side, go to volumes and then go to nav mesh bounds volumes, drop this into your scene and then if you press P to enable pathfinding, drag this down so it goes within your scene here, you should see that you have this little green space come up and this is essentially your navigatable space within your level. So what we're going to do with this, if I scale this up, it is essentially going to tell the AI where they can go. So you can see here, they can go up the stairs, they can go to this higher level, and pretty much anything that is not really a collision volume, they can go through. So you can see I've got this box here, it pretty much calculates they should not be going through that box. And it's something that we're going to use to tell our AI where they can and cannot go. So what you want to do is pretty much scale this on the width, the length, and just make this fit the entirety of your level and just place it within there. Just go ahead and place this in, just scale it using the normal transformation tools, and you can see now that it's updated, it's now made our whole level green. That means they can go in it. If it's red, it's just calculating. If it's, you know, there's nothing there, they just simply can't walk in it. So what we need to do now then is pretty much place this in a way that we can control where they go. Now if you wanted to, you could have you know, a couple of these volumes within the level. Or what you could do, what I'm going to simply do for now is let them go out the whole level, but I don't want them going up quite high. So the way I'm going to do this is by scaling down the height of this nav mesh bounds volume, you can see it's going to take away this upper level so when you're up there, the AI is essentially going to stop following you and it's not going to go up there. So it's going to stop just here at the base of the stairs. So now that we've done this and the engine knows where the AI can go, what we need to do now then is essentially open up our simple AI blueprint and then within this we are going to tell it to simply have a component. This component is going to be something called a pawn sensing volume. Not a pawn sensing volume, but a pawn sensing component. If you go to your viewport, you can't actually see this actor. What this does is it essentially just gives your pawn, your AI, a set of eyes. And when you hear noise, or when you see noise, you know, when you hear the pawn, or when you, sorry, when you see another character, or you see so if you see another character or you hear another character, you can tell it to do an event. The one that we're after is called on see pawn. Now, as of right now, there's no telling where it can see. If you hit compile, and then with this pawn sensing volume selected again, you can see we've got this. I'm going to play around with some quick settings to change the site uh, radius so it's not quite so wide. And what I'm also going to do is quickly turn down my pretty much um, not sensing interval rather but the peripheral vision and you can see now that I can make this a bit more like eyes you don't want it to be too big and one thing you'll notice is my character is actually sideways it's not facing the arrow so I'm just going to use my transformation tools and pretty much just rotate that around just like that and now with my pawn sensing volume it's looking directly out of the eyes of this character which is quite nice what you might want to do is just quickly try and move it up to your mesh. If you can't, it's nothing to worry about. But what I would do is just select this. If you can, move it up. If you can't, don't worry about it. But for now, let's go ahead and create the on C pawn event. So click that and you get this little event here. So what this is going to do is pretty much execute whatever's attached to this if it sees the pawn that you hook up to this. Now we have two characters, the magic character and the sword character. You can only hook up one to this. What I'm going to do is cast to the character 
because both of those are actually childs of the character blueprint. So I can literally just hook up this and it will work with both. And then as the character, what I'm going to tell it to do is tell it to use the AI move to node. And what I can tell this to do now then is tell it to move a pawn. The pawn is going to be itself because we're within a AI blueprint already. And then the destination, you could set this with a manual destination with the X, Y, and Z just using a vector input. Or you could even get the character um, location, so get actor location and then hook that up in there and that will move it to the location of your character. Or what you could do, which is what I'm simply going to do, is tell it the AI to move to our target actor which is going to be our character. So that's pretty much just going to chase the character which is great and then you've got your acceptance radius here which is essentially just a size value which is when it's going to stop chasing it we've got some stuff for on success on fail and just a normal um, execution node we're not going to worry about this for now but what we should see in a second if we compile this close this and press play is if I walk in front of these AI now you can see they're going to chase me and we basically have some beginner AI for our level they're going to chase me down they're going to hunt me and they're still going to have all the basic functionality that I had before so if I wanted to I could keep pressing one on my keyboard and I could just continue to hit this AI until it dies and then I can just run over it and pick up the loot which is pretty awesome. Now guys we have got loads more on the way in terms of AI. We're going to be getting them to roam the level if they can't see the player and a whole bunch of other awesome stuff just like that. Anyway guys that's pretty much everything for today's video. Once again guys thanks for watching, stay awesome, keep creating, your boy Vertus signing out. This series was made possible by you guys supporting me on Patreon. If you want to help create other series like this then check out my Patreon page in the link in the description.